that's simply not possible. And I don't find this funny anymore. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not, you stupid bastard? Ladies and gentlemen, you may have seen a one system challenge where you only take a single system in a vast galaxy of stars. You might have also seen a no hyperdrive challenge where you're limited to jump drives or a specific type of FTL method. In today's video, I am going to go completely insane by attempting to combine both the one system challenge and the no hyperdrive challenge by taking on the no FTL challenge. Yes, that's right. In a 4X game like Stellaris, I'm going to remove one of the 4Xs, that is the Explore, and I'm going to sit on my butt for the entire game and not use any FTL. I won't even research hyperdrives or jump drives or anything that will allow me to leave my home system. This is Stellaris like you have never seen it before. I will of course also be trying to feature in some roleplay elements to keep it fun and upbeat because yes, I will be stuck in a single system for pretty much the majority of the game. I'm also counting gateways as FTL methods, partly because they are and partly because you have to equip a hyperdrive in order to fly through a gateway, something I'm deeply upset by. But without any further ado, I'm going to cut my rambling short and dive straight into the empire that we will be playing for this challenge today. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, Space Z is the mega corporation we're going to be playing with today. Privatized exploration will be the backbone we're going to use to complete today's challenge. That being not researching any type of FTL whatsoever. We do start with subspace drives. However, we're going to get rid of them from all of our military ships and we won't be using any of our exploration ships or construction ships that we start the game with to go outside of our home system. Because basically that subspace drive technology in this universe does not work whatsoever. I mentioned this will be a role play as well, and let's just dive into that for a moment. So, for years, this civilization was told that the hyperdrive was almost finished. Patiently, they waited. Yet all the while, the subsidiary in charge of the project was quietly diverting the funds into their own private accounts. Milon Tusk is a bit of a shady bastard. Then, when the fraud was finally revealed, the corporation, Space Z, hasten to provide experimental exploratory vessels. And they have told the public, through a network of public relations specialists, just how wonderful and fantastic these subspace drives actually are. Yes, this mega corporation has a virtual army of specialists, <coughs> bots, ready to engage in battles of public opinion. They like to uh, twit about it, I'm told. So yes, Space Ed, led by the CEO Milon Tusk here, well, they are going to be selling something of a massive lie to the entire population of the planet Rothak. That being a life-seeded Gaia world, a rare jewel in the marvel of the universe. We're authoritarian, xenophobic, and of course, slightly materialistic, as we want to put away our childish things such as god spirits and phantasms of the brain. Together, we are going to be attempting to fly out into the universe without ever leaving home. It's, it's gonna be a bit of a wild ride. Stick around, ladies and gentlemen, to see if it's actually possible to never use FTL in Stellaris. If you want to follow along with this game at home, these are the settings I'm using today. In the eon since the first primitive Tuxcan community took shape in the idyllic valleys and lush forests of Rothak, our civilization has flourished and prospered. The vast world we call home has always been a paradise to our kind, and as our scientific knowledge progressed, we began to see patterns in the biosphere that could not be natural. Did some unknown entity create this world specifically for us? Are we playing a part in a greater design? Regardless of its origin, our people have thrived in the pleasant climate and gentle environment of our homeworld. Now, after the <coughs> discovery of FTL travel, the finest minds at Space Z have finished development of the first subspace drive. The stars themselves are finally within your grasp. Well, here is the <coughs> galactic view. 
we might as well turn off the hyperlane map mode because we're not going to need that. Ah yes, the glory and majesty of the universe. Back to our little bit of it, Space Ed is going to be starting off with some space mining, wouldn't you know it. And then I suppose this science ship should probably be disbanded. Uh, I mean, we've just sent it off into the wild galaxy. It's out there, ladies and gentlemen, out there amongst the stars, uh, surveying other planets right now. It, it definitely is. You can trust me on this, I'm not a bot. And we're getting live footage right now coming through from our first exploration vessel. What was that? We've got four misfires and the sink was off. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna uh, go to the restroom for a moment. Well, with such a successful start to our exploration of the universe, let's um, invest in researching the scientific method. Yeah, I'm being told it might come in handy. Our Lord and Savior Milon Tusk now brings you a message of prosperity. Our expansion into the stars is going really, really well. Don't worry about it. And in his infinite generosity, Milon Tusk will be clearing the sprawling slums of our homeworld. All of the citizens in those slums are being transferred on our very first colony ship to a planet far away in a different system. Rejoice citizens, for they have been selected. Yes, they're going to be going on a colony ship any moment now. G good luck and goodbye, lovely people. Now, there are claims by the devious citizen Walpole that an information quarantine is in place outside of our capital system. But I've spoken personally to the CEO of SpaceEd, and I want to assure you, the good people and customers, that we do not have an information quarantine. There is plenty of information coming back. If you have any messages or communications you'd like to send to a friend or family member that has migrated to an external world, please report directly to your nearest processing facility where we will absolutely get your communication sorted. Remember, in Milan we trust. After a series of devastating terrorist attacks on our homeworld perpetrated by the notorious citizen Walpole and his anti-capitalist, no, anti-life agenda, they have claimed that the new colonies are not real, that the people being shipped off are simply being killed. This is entirely incorrect. We must come together now and work towards a common goal in harmony for the good of ourselves and our great and glorious CEO, Milon Tusk, an investor and a reformer with an import-export agenda. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. And now we get to one of those lovely parts of this video. Where I simply have to wait around. Could you believe it? Not going out and using FTL to explore the galaxy in Stellaris makes things a little boring and monotonous. With the scientific method well understood, obviously for decades by us here at Space Z, we're going to be setting up some specialist research laboratories to really further the agenda of our government, your government, and of course, CEO Milon Tusk. And Milon pursues more than just profit, ladies and gentlemen. Do not think that. It's it's not true. It's a lie. Stop stop the lies in your brain. Private communique for space dead official eyes only. Uh, we have a stage four alert. I repeat, stage four. In the Satatoni system, there are readings we cannot explain. Abbas Ibrahim has been sent out immediately to go and figure out what on earth is going on. Everything is fine. I um, recommend not telling the public about this just yet. Not that we could ever get to Satatoni anyway. These ships we're only able to spot through our long-range telescopes. The people of Space Z, blindly following the words of their leader, did not question the existence of the colonies. Any that did were quietly and quickly allowed to purchase a one-way ticket off the planet. At a hefty fee until the great founder, Tusk himself, could work out a way to profit from the truth, it would remain buried, along with all further complications. Uh, thank 
goodness for the information quarantine, a ship just appeared at the edge of our space and then moved away almost as fast. Luckily, the general populace have not been informed. The blanketing blue signal employed by our exploration vessel Gargarin has been particularly useful in preventing any telescopes on the planet from working. Not to worry though, the population are pretty much ecstatic at the moment. We're doing everything right. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you Norgan Prime, the fourth colony that Space Z is opening up for colonization. If you are one of the many millions of migrants without proper housing on our capital, please sign up to your nearest processing center today and we'll get you sent over there lickety split. There is fresh housing, accommodation, and plenty of jobs for all of those of the underclasses that wish to sign up. We've met the United Shabtak Union. They'd like us to know that capitalism is but a stepping stone on the path to a classless society. What utter hogwash. An information quarantine level 5 is in effect on all United Shabtak Union information. At the moment, we have noticed they have quite a few star systems around us and they seem to be able to fly between them. It's absolutely terrifying. Factions amongst the general populace have risen up. The Obedience, Loyalty and Duty Vanguard otherwise known as the Tesla Investors, stand ready and united with CEO Milon Tusk. The Bytecoin enthusiasts are also rather happy too. Not to mention the Tusk Primacy Movement. Everyone is doing such a darn good job. In entirely unrelated news, the Kingfisher class of a border patrol ship has been designed, equipped with the latest in FTL technology. In another completely free and fair election, Milon Tusk has won with overwhelming support. What a great and valuable system that we're all a part of. And what a large and glorious space empire Space Z has provided for us all. Yes, from the Nithron expanse all the way east into the far gone cluster, our spaceships and our people are out there right now, we promise, doing good work. United Shabtak Union Intelligence File 4-73 The United Shabtak Union have guaranteed the independence of Space Z. Our diplomats are now working on a treaty that will guarantee the sovereignty of our space and also hopefully provide us with some uh, economic subsidies. In private, we welcome the United Shabtak Union as our overlords. And I for one welcome our new insect overlords. In a special announcement ceremony, Chief Executive Milon Tusk has announced an expansion to Space Z and all associated industrial and corporate enterprises. We have taken on a great subsidiary. We have found alien life. Not only is that alien life deeply in need of our protection and assistance, but they have gratefully agreed to become our corporate lessers and we'll be opening a corporate outreach center on their home planet to assist them with whatever it is they need. We've opened commercial forums, research enterprises, commercial forums, and yeah, yeah, that's about it, all right? Okay, but look, the people of the Shabtak Union are truly our friends. Not only that, but with a revolutionary new breakthrough in technology, the great CEO Milon Tusk will be opening up new habitation inside our very own solar system. No longer will you need to report to processing and be sent to the uh, colonies. Now you can be sent to one of these lovely habitats. Report number 437, priority redacted. We've acquired an asset in the United Shabtak Union, an influential Shabtak professional. This scientist should further assist us in the acquisition of highly confidential Shabtak technologies. Meanwhile, after careful discussion, we have realized that going from expansion permitted to expansion regulated isn't quite the downside that the CEO Milon Tusk thought it might be. We are going to be asking for some research and advanced resource subsidies, of course. Business boomed. The people prospered never knowing the dark past they were walking away from. For without the economic assistance of the United Shabtak Union, the dwindling resources of the homeworld would support fewer and fewer customers. Many, thankfully for the stock market, did not know how close to the precipice of societal collapse they had come. Yet amidst these boons would lie the seeds of further evils. 
the great Tusk was not asleep. Ruthless competition should now be encouraged. All levels within our society, within our mega corporation, should be constantly vying with each other in ruthless competition. It is, after all, a four-legged mammal eat four-legged mammal world. We've also formed a nice little commercial pact with the Azarian Interstellar Confederacy. This has allowed us to place branch offices on basically all of their worlds, even if they might decide that they've got cold feet and break that agreement within a few days. It's possible the universe may be slightly larger than we at first realized. There are more than just a few alien races out there. For the very first time, ladies and gentlemen, CEO Milong Tuts brings you great news. We now have a fully armed and operational migration treaty with the United Shabtak Union. There are some terms and conditions, of course. Due to some passport restrictions, if you leave Rothak or any of the surrounding habitats and travel into United Shabtak Union space, you will only be able to return to one of the colonies, the external colonies on another world that definitely, definitely exist, until we can make sure there are no biohazard threats or anything like that. Behold the great and bountiful Tuscan nation, proudly brought to you by Space Z, taking you from cradle to grave. Choose your new life today on one of the many fresh colonies that Space Z has opened. Together, we can build a brighter future with the leadership of the visionary CEO, Milon Tusk. Round trip purchase is unavailable. Terms and conditions apply. Report to your local processing center for further details. Oh, something happened, something happened. Well, even though we may not be able to fly out there into the wider galaxy, the galaxy has come to us. We are the proverbial Muhammad, and thus I present the mountain. I think that's the way around it goes. Anyway, this is the enigmatic cache, codenamed Rama, definitely not a reference, don't look it up, and we are going to be studying it, we might even put some people on it that will fly off elsewhere into the galaxy just to see where it goes. Otherwise, Population Project Overspill is working very nicely, we're putting all of those lovely people that simply we haven't got room for on our capital homeworld onto these orbiting stations. No longer are we having to completely kill them, uh, I mean uh, process them and send them off for colonization, in our gigantic empire with so many colonies. Yes, the mighty Space Z nation is in fact the largest nation in the entire galaxy. No other nation can rival us in terms of uh, economic output or capacity or any, any of those sorts of things. That's why we are a preeminent member of the galactic community. Yes, we're doing very well, thank you very much. Uh, it seems there's a minor disagreement between the United Shabtak Union and the Holy Sin Republic. Um, they both have really big fleets. We, we don't really know exactly who's going to, to win this one. Well, the United Shabtak Union would like to renegotiate the terms of the agreement. Unfortunately, that will not be acceptable at this time. And of course, our proposal, the proposal to form a galactic market, has met with unanimous success from the galaxy at large. I'm not even making this up. This is, this is true, ladies and gentlemen, it's happening. Customers, future employees, shareholders of SpaceEd, ladies and gentlemen, I have an announcement that will blow your little space socks off. Now, no longer will you have to suffer the indignity of weak flesh. If you would not like to receive this optional upgrade, please report immediately to your nearest processing facility. Never forget, ladies and gentlemen, CEO Milon Tusk always, always has your best interests at heart, and that's why you should vote Tusk. The galactic market has been founded. Any economic problems we once had will soon be swept by the wayside. Channel 4 News with five-time Emmy Award-winning anchor, Ron Burgundy. Our mighty military campaigns have yielded results. The once hostile nation of Kosher is now a vassal under us, Space Z. CEO Milon Tusk met with Prime Minister Cole Tight just last week in order to finalize the arrangements for this negotiation. 
branch offices have been opened on new worlds, and another era of prosperity dawns once more for our great people. Hyperspace travel, jump drive travel, all of these turned out to be completely useless wastes of our research potential. There is clearly no way of flying around other than the good old trusty sublight travel. We're going to make some minor modifications to the post Shabak, making them even better, and we'll probably make some minor modifications to others across the Empire. We'll also be rolling out a whole host of new upgrades, taking you from just a Tuxcan Superior into a Super Tuxcan Superior. Please pop down to your local Tesla store to apply for this upgrade. Good news, everyone! The planet you know and love, your homeworld, Rothak, is going to be getting an upgrade. We're going to get rid of all of that nasty, terrible biology, ugh, awful stuff, and we're going to replace it with state-of-the-art arcologies instead. This will provide power outlets for all of the various cybernetic implants and upgrades you've been forced to take, I mean, opted into under Space Z. With 138 years under his belt, Milon Tusk is now a daft politician. He started off as merely a corporate figurehead. One has to assume now his weight goes far in the galactic community. Far enough that we're actually able to tell the general public just how good we actually are now. Yes, there are some minor confusions about who is subject to whom between ourselves and the United Shabtak Union, but overall, we can smooth any sort of issue like that quite under the rug by doing a bit of an optimization change to those loyalty circuits you lovely folks have in your head. And if you're enjoying this video, please engage loyalty circuit directive 043 and press like button. The once green marble of Rothak has now been repurposed and upgraded to the beautiful planet you see before you. The entire encasement has been an overwhelming success. The entire encasement has been an overwhelming success. Good job all round. We seem to have been drawn into something of a war. The Jibru conservers have declared war on our uh, vassal, the United Shabtak Union. I'm sure I'll be fine. We have some of the finest defenses in the galaxy ready and waiting. And of course, the best chief executive officer this side of the universe, an expansionist reformer with investor traits and, as ever, a wonderful cyborg, the one, the only, Milon Tusk. We're just going to claim just the one system. Just in case, just in case we're going to claim the font of knowledge, the capital system, the Ecumenopolis planet of this fallen empire. Hopefully the mighty forces of our union, oh, they're losing. All right, this massive armada of ships that can fly, it's pretty rude of them that they can do that, but they're just doing great. Yikes. This is not good. The combined fleets are attacking. It looks like they're not doing very well though. Oh no, not doing very well at all. Uh oh. Well, it was nice to have our overlord while it lasted. I mean, our vassal. Oh, and now a big fleet has joined in. Yeah, this has not gone well for, for our side of the fight. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Well, it looks like our allies are getting their act together. As one, they are uniting and charging straight at the Fallen Empire. This could be a battle for the ages. It seems like the Fallen Empire has decided to meet them on the field of battle, but it really does depend on if either side can actually choose where that battle will be located. Unfortunately, they've engaged haphazardly here, not really doing enough damage to this combined fleet, but the reinforcements have arrived. A massive armada of united ships. Here they go. Absolutely wonderful to watch through our telescopes from the safety of home. With the war in the west, the Eastern Fallen Empire, the On Attack Peacekeepers, have apparently taken this time to awaken as well. The galaxy truly stands on a knife edge. Luckily, Chief Executive Officer Milon Tusk is up for the job. He had the foresight to propose, on behalf of Space Z and the entire community, the formation of a Galactic Council 
in order to establish emergency powers for just such an event as this one. Oh, and us with our one system are the second most powerful empire diplomatically in the galaxy. And of course, due to our role as the forefront of galactic policy, we have been granted a seat on this new council. Well, I don't quite entirely know how it's happened, but due to some claiming shenanigans, we've actually managed to get ourselves a second colony. Yes, that's right. We now have two systems, the Halvan system and the Vesem Clack system. With one system, we dominated galactic politics. Think what we can do with two. It seems like the mighty Jibru are mighty no longer. After losing the war with us, they are now only equivalent to our good selves in fleet power. It's pretty pathetic if you ask me. And it has happened again. Minerals are now more expensive in the galactic market than alloys. Yes, in this topsy-turvy world fueled by the massive ecumenopolises of Rothak and elsewhere, alloys are a dime a dozen, but the minerals required to make them, oh boy, are they expensive. All right, so me and Greg down in accounting, we were, we were having a chat the other day, and, um, well, I didn't believe Greg at first. I thought he was, he was going absolutely wild. Apparently, apparently we've decided to put our middle finger up at our closest neighbors and uh, subsidy paying overlords. Sorry, sorry, we're, uh, we're of course talking about our vassals. Of course there are vassals. What would I be saying? Um, and the CEO has decided to uh, revoke the contracts. Yeah, apparently there was an expiry date on them. We've reached that point and we're going to go and fight our way to freedom with ships that can't leave the system. I, I mean, I didn't believe it myself until I saw the paperwork, but you know, it's a, it's a do or die maneuver. I'm sure Milon Tusk, who, if you ever bothered coming to the office and doing some actual work, would 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 know what he was talking about. Yeah, he's a he's a great guy. There's a reason we keep re-electing him, not because the elections are rigged or anything. Anyway, let's let's do this thing. I mean, they've only got five nations allied against us. What could possibly go wrong? Just a very quick, completely out of character moment. We're having a bit of an issue, so. Uh, here is our overlord, the United Shabtak Union. I'd like to declare war, an independence war, and fight all of these people. When I click that button, absolutely nothing happens, however. I've made sure I'm just on a basic bulwark contract. I've got negative loyalty. And we just can't seem to cause them to fight us. I've told the devs they're looking into the bug. I might be that I've done something wrong. I do, in fact, have a truce with the Wii Zirakian Interplanetary Assembly. However, if I go into the console commands and turn off truces, I still can't declare the war, so I, I honestly don't think that's what's going on. But basically, we're now the strongest member of the galactic community. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. We have the largest fleet that cannot go anywhere. Look at this majestic set of ships. Isn't it beautiful? Um, the galactic community is about to push someone else through as custodian. No, 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 we don't want that. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. I want to have an all-out cataclysmic war with my overlord and, of course, with their neighbor, the Isarian Interstellar Confederacy, to prove once and for all that we deserve our independence. To do that, I am going to jimmy it to request independence, then cause a conquest war. Well, we've done some jimmying and some pokeying, and I've actually managed to declare war and a proper war, a proper independence war against my overlord. It turned out the issue was that because I had branch offices on all of my overlord's worlds, I couldn't declare the independence war against them. I mean, my economy is going to completely collapse now, but we'll, we'll just see how it goes. Oh, goodness me. Yeah, without those branch offices, we are in a little bit of trouble. Let's just see if we can hold the line for just a little bit. Wait. Wait, what? Oh. Oh, beautiful. Now, I also in a war with my overlord as well. Yes, this is... This is peak Stellaris play. So I'm at war with, with all of that. Um, apparently the most powerful in the galaxy. You know, given we're the most powerful, can we... No, we can't nominate ourselves as custodian because we're not independent yet. Of course, absolutely brilliant. Even though we've lost all of our bonuses for being no longer apparently a bulwark. Uh, yes, excellent, excellent. I mean, the moment doesn't look like they're going to come and attack us either. 
We do have the Bulwark Hull Degenerator, which is just really nasty. Minus 30%. Oof. And now I realize in order to balance the budget, we can start selling uh, 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 prisoners with jobs. Ah, and the best prisoners with jobs are the Super Jibru. If we sell a whole load of these Super Jibru, which have been upgraded with loyalty circuits and cybernetics, we should make an absolute fortune. Milon Tusk does it again, ladies and gentlemen. Well, they've begun the invasion. Uh, this could be an issue. This could definitely be an issue. Um, they have xenomorphs and we have kind of robots. They, oh yeah, they, they've kind of, yeah, this is problematic. Well, we're selling the Super Jibru. I believe that means we're selling these folks who are defending, uh, defending the planet, but it's fine. It's fine. Fine, fine, fine. Oh, and they brought up reinforcements. They have a cave troll. How excellent. Yes, this is going very well, swimmingly well. You are actually managing to sell soldiers as slaves, smuggle them out while the planet is being bombarded and invaded. It's, oh my goodness, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. We can into space. I wonder if they'll ever actually attack us. Yeah, I mean, this this big blob of fleets, I, I don't think we can beat that. No, no, no. If they actually come to fight us, we're, uh, we're probably a little bit dead. Yes. But we just need to outlast them. All of them. And to do that, we are selling any pot we can get our hands on. There they go. The selling of slaves, that, that, that's six months worth of energy right there for one pop. There we go, five months worth of energy. It's just so good. All right, I'm not sure if I'm meant to be allowed to do this, but I can just keep selling all the slaves, um, even on the occupied worlds. It's excellent. There, there they go. Occupied world slaves, be free. Bit of a strange one here. Um, well, because I'm at war with my overlord and my overlord is also at war with the Jibru conservators who I'm at war with as well, but I have the claim on their capital. Yes, you've guessed it. My overlord on my behalf while at war with me is making sure the capital falls and is then given over to me. I just, I just can't even with this war system. It's I, like, what is happening? What is happening? I may not be able to keep the font of knowledge for very long, but the 180 pops here are going to make a very fine addition to my collection when I'm then allowed to sell them as slaves. Stop pooping around at the font of knowledge and come and fight me! Fight me! You coward! Fight me! We have a pact! Just as I predicted, we have achieved victory and stolen the font of knowledge. Let's, um, let's sell some slaves from the font of knowledge then, I, I, I suppose. Wait, we've got no armies. Okay, okay. Interesting. Interesting. But we've got Jibru. Oh my goodness, no, this is rid No, come off it. Yes, I will have all of the energy credits, please. I appreciate your donations. Um, what the heck? <gasps> the Church of Jeff just displayed psionic potential. Everybody panic. I don't hear you panicking loud enough. Now the United Shabtak Union have reoccupied the font of knowledge, but they can do absolutely nothing about our secret slave trades. Ladies and gentlemen, the passing of a titan. Chief Executive Officer Milon Tusk has died at the age of 176. With his death and the power vacuum at the top of Space Z, things are starting to change. First of all, the people of our great nation no longer have appetite for this uh, aggressive expansion war against the United Shabtak Union, our vassals. Not only that, um, they've started to get some leaked documents out showing we're actually quite a small speck in a very large universe. And for that reason, we'd very much like the protection back of the United Shabtak Union. And with that, the Chief Executive Officer Beth Jesus steps up to the plate ready to handle any procedural matters that need our attention. The galaxy is fairly united. We didn't get that massive space battle I wanted, but we were just... I was sat here for 20 years and no one was coming to fight us. It was... it was just silly. We were at war with ourselves, basically. We were at war and also allied with our overlord at the same time. It, the, yeah, it, we, it had to stop. I had more important things to do. My sanity was fraying. 
thank you very much if you've stayed with me all the way to the end. This is it. This is the secret call out now. Congratulations, you've watched this far through. But yes, we went through the entire game without ever researching FTL. We got to be the largest member of the galactic community. We had the biggest navy, etc, etc. But all of that still wasn't enough to defeat the greatest enemy of all, buggy war mechanics. But do you feel that this was a win? Did I complete the challenge? We did have the largest individual navy and the highest diplomatic weight in the entire galaxy. There were some minor limitations and drawbacks to our power, as you may have noticed, but I don't know. I think maybe it was a successfully completed challenge, but please let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this bungled attempt at a challenge video, and you'd like to see me play a challenge slightly more seriously and actually try to win the darn thing, would you like to see what happens when I try to play with only farmers? Yes, the dreaded farmers that I hate so much. If you're a bit of a sadomasochist and you'd like to see 20 to 30 minutes of misery and pain that I went through, click the video on screen now.